Diamond Festival with the Natural Diamond Council, we are so thrilled to be bringing it back for the second time around. We've seen our audience connect back in with diamonds in a way that we haven't seen before, and I am so excited to be talking to Richard Singh, Managing Director of the Natural Diamond Council. We'll be discussing what you can expect from the festival over the next few days and the incredible lineup. Hi, Richard. Lovely to be with you. Pleasure to be here. We're very excited to be uh, starting the Vogue Fest again. So diamonds are such an important part of our Indian heritage and, you know, we've made such a global contribution by way of natural diamonds. Um, we're so thrilled to be partnering with the Natural Diamond Council on this festival again. Um, certainly we've seen that um, the story around natural diamonds is so important to our Vogue audience. Richard, I'd just like to start off by asking you, you know, why this festival and why now in your opinion? Firstly, I'd like to thank the entire team at Vogue. Uh, it's been a pleasure to collaborate with you all. We've been working with you for a long time to build this second season. And I think we had a lot of uh, input, excitement around the first one, a lot of, um, you know, great response from our industry, from the jewelers, designers, consumers. It's been a great ride so far. For us, uh, 2021 was the biggest year ever. The consumer had time to reflect, introspect, and come back and say that they wanted things which held meaning, things which were fewer but better, and things which they could leave behind and, you know, uh, personalize and make their own. Um, natural diamonds fit every aspect of it. And the curiosity around our industry, our product, uh, the designs, the craftsmanship has been so huge in the last year. We thought it makes sense to come back and share trends, knowledge, um, you know, the designs, what's happening, red carpet, business. It's going to be a great two days with you guys. I can't wait. And, you know, I think we've got some such exciting people that we're talking to. Some of the conversations I've learned so much. Um, I'm, you can see I've, I'm totally like converted to wanting to wear natural diamonds absolutely every single day. I might go home in this necklace. Um, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking to some really exciting Gen Z celebrities, which I think is really interesting, like people like Sara Ali Khan. And I'd just like to ask you, what are you noticing from this next generation? How are they differing in terms of their approach to buying jewellery and, and what are they buying? I think that Gen Z's got it right. They are not putting natural diamonds on a pedestal. No longer is the jewellery lying in the locker. It's out and about. They're using it whether they're doing Pilates or on a beach or partying or at a wedding, I think that they have decided they're going to enjoy their diamonds and, uh, you know, wear pieces which um, have meaning, which have a memory attached to them, which have been gifted by a loved one or bought to enjoy a small moment. And they are really enjoying them. And that's the beauty of this generation, that they are not keeping it for a bigger uh, moment in life. You know, they are saying it's now, it's right here. Let's enjoy what we have and let's uh, celebrate the smaller moments with these sparkling natural diamonds. So I think that's what they've got right. It's not just this aspect of life, but everything. And it's showing in the fine jewelry section as well. I, I couldn't agree more. And I think a lot of our conversations have really centered on um, the meaning, the personal meaning and how special diamonds are, natural diamonds are. And, you know, I, I love one of the quotes from um, Valerie Messica who says, diamonds are energy. And I think, you know, as not to make it too woo woo, but, but it's true, like it's something so close to your skin. And it's, it's I mean, for me personally, um, as someone that's been living out of a suitcase finally here in, in Mumbai, um, you know, I, I wear jewelry that, um, I have diamonds that I got from my nani that I've repurposed into other pieces that literally um, it's, it's, it's my identity. It's, it's something that I hold so dear. So I think, um, I think it's, it's such a special topic, which brings me to this idea of modern day heirlooms. And I know we're gonna be talking to the incredible Sanjay Garg of Raw Mango, just about the art of reviving old objects and materials and techniques. And I just actually spoke with the Bollywood wives and you know, that was something that really came up, this idea of, of heirlooms. Um, you know, and that idea of heirlooms really brings me to the point of sustainability because it's it's a conscious choice. It's a conscious um, 
it's there's nothing more sustainable than you know buying something that holds its value that you can that you can pass down i'd love to hear your thoughts around that and diamonds being a conscious a conscious um, consumer choice um you know i'm there is a sense of pride in being a part of this industry and the effort that the industry is making to improve to better and to give back um the industry employs about 10 million people worldwide gives back you know in terms of healthcare to almost 4 million people educates about half a million kids and there is so much effort that is going into um, give back and build to the communities where we are so you know you have local carriers uh, where the communities you give back i think we are very proud as an industry of all the work that we are doing and very happy and thrilled to be a part of it from a consumer angle um as a woman uh, you know probably the oldest thing you will ever hold in your hands is your diamond it's a billion years old it's older than dinosaurs it's uh, you know a memory a journey a piece of history that you have and you have the opportunity to customize it and make it all your own very current very um something that trends something you enjoy and i think the beauty is that you pass it on you you mentioned inheriting from your nani i have a uh, bangle i got uh, you know when i got married and uh, we make the first uh, dessert at home and my grandmother in law gave me a kada and it's the most stunning piece of natural diamond and emeralds and um, i you know i enjoy it even today i've been married a long time now but it's it's something so beautiful to know that you're wearing a bangle which is 100 years old and four generations before you have worn it and uh, there's something you carry not just a memory but a little bit of love with you every time you wear it and i think what is beautiful is that um, this can be turned and made your own i'm not wearing it the way she wore it or her uh, mom wore it or uh, grandmother wore it i'm wearing it differently i enjoy wearing it with my jeans and she probably wore it with kanjivarams and um you know worn differently style differently but something i hope my daughter will wear after me i'm sure she will i mean i think that's the you know i i guess trends come and go and we can discuss some of the trends that we're seeing but i think the trendiest thing about natural diamonds for me is a uh, you know as a stylist as a fashion editor as as an editor is the fact that they are timeless it's not it's not something that's dictated by um you know a, a season i think there's something that hold value and i think what we're seeing with the small conscious consumer and certainly with our audience is they're so um they're so knowledgeable and they want to make really intelligent choices and i feel like investing in something like natural diamonds and really stamping your own individuality is is the most stylish thing that you can do. Richard, is there anything that you're seeing by way of um trends that you can talk to us about to preempt the festival? Uh we actually have just released our trend report. It's the second season for our trend report and few things that are standing out and we are seeing gorgeous designs come out. is hoops with a twist i think the classic is back we are seeing hoops on the red carpet we are seeing them when you're on the beach but we are seeing hoops being elevated and being uh, you know um, giving you that little flirty happiness in your life the second trend we are seeing is mismatched diamonds you have uh, you know shapes that you're trying formats you're trying uh, designs that you're trying and mixing it all up to make something which is fun and uh, exciting and yours and the third is of course bringing back a piece of history we are seeing old vintage cuts back so whether it's portrait cuts briolets it's a lot of exciting stuff which um, you know from the time of the maharajas to now being reinvented we are seeing it again in engagement rings on the red carpet so that's the three big things we are seeing um, anything exciting you you are seeing uh, on the vogue pages that you are seeing the influencers wear Oh, always always i mean i think uh you know jewelry and diamonds especially is just something that our audience really connects with i mean i you know, there's such a huge interest in terms of alt- alternate ways of um you know looking at wedding rings engagement rings the rise of the promise ring there's a lot of interest in different cuts uh i think the pear cut is something that's like really trending right now which is quite interesting because it feels a little bit 
retro and like a bit kind of Y2K. So that's kind of something really interesting to see converting into natural diamonds. Um, I think what we're noticing is there are no rules though. It's really, you know, it's, it's about personal style and how you style things back together. So I don't, rather than specific trends, I think we're just seeing people are interested in seeing how individuals really style their jewelry um, and getting ideas from that. Um, so, you know, I think, I think the one thing we can take away is there are no rules, which is, you know, quite freeing. Yes, absolutely. Another thread that's come up, which I found really lovely, um, is this idea of, of course, uh, you know, the beauty of being gifted something is amazing, but then there's also that art of self-gifting and young women and young men marking milestones for themselves with a special purchase. Um, I know I have an internal milestone that I hope to mark with, I, I, you know, there's a piece that I have my eye on and I would just love to talk to you about that. Are you seeing this, are you seeing this trend from your point of view? People like really self-gifting and, and taking ownership back of um, marking their own milestones? Oh yeah, lots of it and it's picking on from what you spoke about Gen Z and the millennials, uh, you know, what they're doing and I think that we are learning from them that every little moment needs to be enjoyed and you know the milestone is defined by you whether it is um, a job a celebration um, a personal achievement Here we've met so many women who are celebrating their kids success because they are as invested in it as uh, you know the daughter is or the son is and everybody wants a little memory to remember the days whether it was the tough times that you got out of or it was the good time that you wanted to celebrate and uh, I think we are seeing a lot more of it. I personally um, treated myself to uh, a bag day when my daughter was born and I felt that working 14 hour days and having a baby and being a great mother, the fact that I was able to straddle both, I needed to treat myself. So I think that every woman you see a lot more of um, a little bit of celebration that you do it's a little treat to yourself and you see a lot more of it happening every day across the board uh, young old um, you're seeing a lot more of it have you uh, I know you said you're eyeing something but purchased something uh, in the past recently that you uh, a treat to yourself uh, something that I'm looking at I mean I, I do have my eye on I, I just want a tennis necklace. I think that's just something that I can wear with jeans, with a t-shirt. I'm a pretty casual cat so um, you know it's just a lovely way to kind of like dress something up and feel, I mean I feel very special in this I have to say. Um, and yeah it's, it's there, there's an internal milestone but I'm definitely buying it for myself and it's probably going to be the first really significant piece of jewelry that I do buy for myself and um, yeah, I think that's incredibly meaningful as a, as a as a young woman, as a career woman, as an independent woman. I I agree completely. I think it's a great way to celebrate, and uh, you know, it gives you that sense of confidence, a, a little sparkle to your step when you move into a room, and it just makes you feel good. And that's what it's all about: the treating yourself. They just they make you look pretty. Let's let's be honest, like. I mean, that came up with the Bolly Wives. It's like, yeah, you just look pretty. And I'm like, yeah, actually, you're right. Like, I mean, aside from everything else, it's like, they just really make you look pretty. Huh? Um, Richard, and then just to, just to sum up, you know, I think uh, natural diamonds and diamonds are just so synonymous with, with luxury today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on behalf of the Natural Diamond Council on, on what, what does luxury mean to you? Um, I think that me individually or what we've heard from, uh, you know, all the people who we meet, consumers we meet, luxury is about uh, two aspects, the freedom to be able to do what we want in any aspect. And the second is to be, um, you know, to have something which is personalized to me, which is all my own and something which means, um, you know, something to me. So it's all about having uh, meaning to every aspect of your life and having the freedom to do and I think somewhere uh, we are lucky to be in an industry where natural diamonds uh, you know they're never bought just like that they're always bought to celebrate a moment a small moment that you cherish or to express your love and it's one of the biggest ways that uh, you know you express what the 
uh, emotion uh, you feel about someone and I think we are in the right place and the last two years have taught us if nothing else that we celebrate every little moment with um, you know a little piece that is close to our heart. Lovely and on that note um, you know tune in for the festival there's going to be some amazing conversations and thank you so much Richard I'm so excited. Thank you very much it's been a pleasure. Thank <music> you.